Hey besties, Angeline here in my home studio where we do all things printing. If you want to make perf cut decals just like this one on the BN2, keep watching because I got you covered. First, I drop the design into Photoshop. This isn't a vector file and you can tell because there's a white background and I need to get rid of that so that I can create some cut lines. We'll select just the design and then I'll copy and paste that without the background. Then I'll duplicate that design and hit color overlay so that we get a black silhouette. The black makes it easier for Illustrator to detect because of the contrast. I'll copy and paste both the black silhouette and also the full color design into Illustrator. Then I'll lay them right on top of each other. Let's select the silhouette and click on object up here, down to image trace, make and expand. It creates a vector around the black silhouette. I don't need the white background, so I'm just going to delete that. I'll swap the black fill to an outline by clicking the little arrow, and I don't want to cut right against the pink color, so we're going to use offset path. I want it rounded and a little tighter than this, so we'll reduce this to 0.1. Now we'll delete this other line because we only want the outer one. I want to simplify the curves so that the perf cut is smooth. So let's go back into object, path, simplify. I want the full menu. I want to see it all. So we'll move this over to see how these adjustments affect the smoothness of the line. I normally just adjust these back and forth till I find a good smoothness that I like and then I'll hit OK. There's a little bit more smoothing that I want to do. It's really just preference. Again, it helps when you're doing perf cut. The smoother, the better. So I'm manually deleting points and adjusting the curves. The reason it's kind of jagged is because it's mimicking all of these lacy curves, which I just realized are actually tiny little hearts. But we don't need that much detail for the outer shape. Again, we want it as smooth as possible. Now we'll go into Window so that we can open up our swatches. Click this to open the swatch library for Roland Verseworks. Okay, sweet. We want the perf cut swatch and it is this cyan one. Now we don't want it filled in just as an outline. We don't want this filled with any colors, so I'll click on the red slash to get rid of that. Okay, perfect. Let's reduce the artboard and save this as a PDF. All right, so we're good. Now I'm going to load the BN2 with some GCVP vinyl, standard glossy calendared vinyl. This one is 3 mil. Now that I have my file in VersaWorks, let's go into the settings, hit get media width to update the size of our vinyl that's in the machine. I'm going to create some copies. We'll adjust the spacing between each copy. And then in quality, I'm going to hit high quality and it says it's going to take three minutes. Now let's go into cut controls and I kind of have my own recipe just because I've been doing this for so long. This is generally my starting point and then I adjust from here, but I think it's usually good. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit print. In high quality, it defaults to printing in unidirection, which is a little bit slower. But I do use unidirection when I'm trying to print some smaller text. I feel like it helps with the sharpness of it. All right, so our first two rows are pretty much done. Now it's going to start the perf cutting. Cutting is now finished. Time for the moment of truth to see how these turned out. Popping it from the back. Okay, this popped out pretty well. There was a little bit of resistance, but it is nice and smooth. No signs of dragging or tearing for the blade. 
I'll pop out the rest. I think I'm going to send some more to print and cut and I'll adjust the, I guess, the half cut for us so that it isn't too hard to pull out. But so far, these look really great. Okay, let's get back to VersaWorks and I have another tip for you. So when we go into settings, I want to adjust. Um, I want to see how much I can truly fit to save some material here and print more per row. So you can change the orientation of this. You can see I can probably fit one more here on the very left side for the bottom row. I know I have a little bit of white space in my artboard, so I'll go in and clip that. And so you can see that it fits a whole nother sticker. So good job on maximizing the material there. So that makes a big difference here. We're printing seven per row versus the original five per row. Now I do have to say though that you still need to be cautious about how many you fit per row. And I'll show you the reason why in just a little bit when I pop all of these out. Let me show you what I mean by being cautious about the spacing between each sticker. You don't want to overcrowd them. Let me take a few of these out so that you can see what I'm talking about. See this blank space? You want enough margin so that the sheet still holds itself together. If you cut too close, it could make the sheet too floppy and it could bunch up and cause some jams in your machine. It's not worth trying to save a little bit of material. I'd say this was a really good guesstimation for our spacing and I am very pleased with how these stickers came out. Whoop. Okay, my stack is all situated now. Besties, I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please hit that like button, drop a comment down below if there are any other print and cut projects you want to see or if you just want to say hi, I enjoy reading those. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Bye for now.